If you want to learn structural engineering and you want to do it in the quickest and most efficient way possible, the seven topics that I'm going to cover in this video are the ones you need to focus on. These topics are the ones that you're actually going to use after you graduate. They're the ones that employers look for and value the most in new graduates, and they're the ones that give you the greatest return on investment for all the time and effort you put into them. For context, I've been in the engineering world for about six years now and currently work at a mid-sized structural engineering firm that designs high-rises all the way down to residential houses. Over the last year, I've personally designed around 25 timber and steel framed homes, worked on several large scale industrial steel and concrete frame buildings, and also helped out where I could on some high rise projects. Before this, I was at a large global company for a year doing mainly steel frame projects, and while I was at uni, I did two internships, one at a small company and the other at a large. Also, while I was at uni, I spent a crap load of hours studying trying to get the best grades possible, and ended up graduating with class one honors and the university medal for academic achievement. But I definitely made it to where I am the long way, and that's why in this video I'm going to cut out all the fluff and just cover the essentials. That way, those of you that want to learn structural engineering fast know what's worth your time. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to learn is the fundamentals. And in structural engineering, the fundamentals break down into two different categories engineering mechanics and mechanics of materials. Starting with engineering mechanics, the things you're going to want to focus on here are how to solve free body diagrams, how to draw and solve bending moment and shear force diagrams, the analysis of trusses through the method of joints, and also how to find and calculate material properties like the center of gravity and the second moment of area. My suggestion here is that you really take your time and understand this basic stuff properly because everything you do from this point onwards builds upon this stuff. So if you don't have a solid foundation in these basics, when things get more complex later on, you're going to start to struggle. In particular, I would suggest that you make sure that you fully understand bending moment and shear force diagrams and what shapes these graphs make under different loadings and support types. Later on, when you start to model shear force and bending moment diagrams in computer programs, having these graph shapes memorized is one of the ways you're going to be able to verify that what you've actually modeled is correct. Without knowing what the shear force or the bending moment is supposed to look like under different loadings and support types, there's no way you can be certain what you've modeled is actually correct, and at that point you're literally just guessing, which is obviously something you don't want to be doing. Okay, now let's move on to the second half of the fundamentals, which is mechanics and materials. Here you are going to want to focus on learning about material properties like the modulus of elasticity and also how to calculate the section modulus. You should also learn about stress, strain, and Hooke's law, what factors affect how much a beam deflects, and how different frames deflect under certain loads and support types. And finally, you should learn how the flexure formula works. Now, besides the fundamentals that I've just mentioned, I wouldn't spend any more time than you have to in order to pass your exams, solving things from first principles. Once you start working, you'll never have to solve anything using first principles, so there's no point being bogged down in all this theory, because as you'll see, a lot of this stuff is super time consuming to do, but mainly because a lot of this stuff has actually been programmed into software. For example, once you're a working engineer, you're never going to find the bending moment diagram of a beam through solving the equations by hand, as this involves a long-winded hand calculation process that also has a lot of opportunities for you to make a mistake. Instead, you'll put the beam and its loads into a structural analysis program, and you'll get the same result with a lot less effort and a lot less margin for error. Alright, now the second topic you need to master is calculating design loads and design actions. First, calculating design loads is the process of working out the magnitude of all the different loads acting on an individual member. So this means you need to learn how to calculate dead loads live loads, wind loads, earthquake loads, and maybe even snow loads. And then you need to work out how to calculate each member's tributary area so that you can apply the correct amount of loading. The process of calculating design loads really needs to be done with as much precision as possible as the loads that you take at this step will govern what is outputted when you're finding design actions. And design actions for those that are super new to all this are the governing internal forces that are felt by the member that you're designing. This for example could be something like the largest possible bending moment or shear force. To work out your design action you need to combine design loads, like dead and live, and with this combined loading, you'll get your design action. And to make things a little bit more complex, when you combine your design loads to get your design action, your design loads need to be factored to add an additional layer of safety. The amount each of your design loads gets factored does depend on the load combination that you're using and also on the codes that you're working from. Usually you'll end up with a bunch of different load combinations and out of all these combinations,
combinations, it'll be your job to find the worst one. Again, this is one of those processes that you will have to do on a daily basis as a structural engineer, so while it may have just sounded confusing while I tried to explain it, I'm sure once you've done it a couple of times you'll get the hang of it and you'll see how it all comes together. Alright, and the next topic is steel design. Here is where you'll finally start to combine a lot of what you've learned in the first two topics and really start to get a taste of what it is a structural engineer actually does. Here you'll need to learn how to calculate design loads and design actions for common steel members like rafters, beams, columns, struts and bracing, and you'll also need to learn how to calculate the capacity of each of these members, whether it be in bending, shear, tension or compression. What I mean by this is that if you're designing a steel beam to be used in the floor, you'll need to follow this sort of design process. You'll need to work out how much dead and live load will be acting on the beam, you'll need to combine this loading and work out your design actions, and then on the other side of things you'll need to work out the capacity of the beam, either through reading capacity tables or through first principles. When you are learning it is good to find the capacity in both ways, but in reality you're only ever going to read off capacity tables. Also, two more things that you should cover in this topic is steel connections and also cold form steel, like pelons and girts. A few common steel connections you should learn because they come up all the time are knees, Apex, base plate, splice, and web side plate connection. Also, one of my favorite books to learn all things steel design has been a book called Design a Portal Frame Buildings, and while this book is tailored to the Australian way of doing things, I do think that a lot of the stuff in this book is transferable to other parts of the world too, so just in case anyone's looking for a good resource, this is one that I definitely recommend. All right, and the fourth topic that's really worth your time is concrete design. Here you'll need to learn about the design of reinforced concrete beams, slabs, walls, and columns, and depending on your uni you'll also need to learn about pre-stressed concrete. In my opinion, concrete design is probably the most intricate and technically challenging course you'll take as a student, but the concepts here are really important to understand, as almost every structure you design as a working engineer will have some amount of concrete in it. For example, even just in residential houses, you'll have to design pad footings, strip footings, retaining walls and raft slabs, and if you're designing more luxury houses, you'll even have to design suspended concrete slabs and reinforced masonry walls. Concrete design really does come up everywhere so it's definitely a must have on your engineering skill list. Also for those of you that are new to the channel you may have missed that I recently released my own personal guide and excel spreadsheet on the design of reinforced concrete so if you are just starting out and you're on the lookout for good resources you might want to check this out so I'll leave a link to it in the description in case you do want to check it out. Alright and topic number five is timber design. Personally, this is something that I did very little of at uni, but it's something that I've used a lot as a graduate. Here you should focus on learning how to calculate the capacity of timber members, specifically in bending, shear, and axial, how to calculate the capacity of bolted and screwed connections, and you should also learn about all the different types of timber elements, like studs, noggings, rafters, and lintels. In Australia where I work, the two Australian standards which detail a lot about how all of this is done is AS 1684.2 and AS 1720.1. I personally haven't used many textbooks on this topic because those two codes that I just mentioned are quite prescriptive, but in other parts of the world there might be good textbooks, so if this applies to you, I would suggest that you do a quick Google search and see if there are any good ones out there. Alright, and number six is geotechnical design. For me, this is one of those topics that while I was at uni, I didn't really think applied to me because I wanted to go down the structural engineering route, but very much to my surprise, we do actually need to know a bit about this stuff. From my experience, there seems to be about three things from the geotechnical space that applies to structural engineering that you really need to know about. And these three things are retaining walls, shallow footings like pad footings and strip footings, and also board piers. When designing these types of structures, you'll need to know about the soil friction angle, soil unit weight, lateral earth pressures, and also about allowable bearing capacity. Right now, I'm actually working on a guide about the design of retaining walls, as they're a lot more complex than you might think. So if you think you'd be interested in getting your hands on this guide when it comes out, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that post. Okay, and the final topic you need to learn is software programs. When you start working, software really is going to be your best friend, so this really should be something that you're learning alongside your studies. These days there's countless video tutorials out there for all sorts of programs, and as a student you can often access these programs for free through a student version, so very easily you can pick up on the basics. Now for each of the topics I've mentioned in this video, I will suggest a few programs that you can check out for each, but just know that different programs are more popular in certain parts of the world, so it's best to do some research and find out what's popular 
popular in the area that you want to work so that you can learn those ones first. Okay, so for Steel, a few programs that you can learn are Space Gas, Strand 7, Autodesk Robot, Stad Pro and SAP2000. And for Steel Connections, you can take a look at RAM Connection, the Connection Builder within Space Gas, or Idea Statica. For Concrete, you've got RAN Concept, Wrapped, ETABS, Strand 7 and SAFE. For Timber in Australia, you can use Hind Design or Structural Toolkit. And for the geotechnical stuff, you can use Tekla TEDS or Structural Toolkit. Also, besides these programs that have been purely made for structural engineering, I do also want to suggest that you get really familiar with Microsoft Excel. I personally like to use Excel a lot, and I think once you get good at it, you can set up a lot of handy spreadsheets that'll save you a lot of time, so I just wanted to remind you not to forget about this program. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might I like this video here where I share what a day in the life of a structural engineer is really like, or that video there where I share how to get ahead of your engineering classmates. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.